What's up everyone, Jason Truly here, back again with more Pwnable.kr. What else did you expect? So in the last episode, we solved Collision, which was all about MD5 collisions and hash collisions and the concept of that, and how we can kind of exploit and get two different strings, two different values to collide and return the same result at the end. So now we're moving on. We have this raccoon doing this little fist bump. It looks like he got damaged. He has like this big band-aid on his forehead. I don't know if I can like zoom in or make that easier to see. Open image, new tab. I don't know, I just think that's kind of funny. So over here, we can click on the challenge. Nana told me that buffer overflow is one of the most common software vulnerability. Is that true? So not the best English, but that's all right. And yes, it is true. Buffer overflows are still very prevalent today, even though they've been around since like I don't know, the 80s and the 90s. And we're going to minimize this, peek the new background. Let's make a little directory, YouTube, Pwnable.kr. Let's CD into this directory. Now let's make another one. Not buff, both. CD into that. Now let's download those two files. Let's mark that um, buffer overflow binary is executable. And now we can run it. Overflow me. Okay, I'm just going to spam the Abe key. Nah, stacks matching detected terminated. And then we get Z shell IOT instruction. Now I'm sure that is slash buff. So let's open this up. Let's see what's going on in the C source code file. All right, we import some standard library stuff. Nothing special there. On line 15, we have the main function. This is the starting point. Two um, parameters being passed are argc, the argument count, and then argv. And then it calls function with the value ox dead beef. So it creates a buffer of size 32 bytes. And then it asks us to overflow it. It calls get string with a comment called smash me. So get string is a vulnerable function, right? And we can look at that here. Man gets get string. Get a string from standard input. So when get string is called, it's gonna hang, it's gonna wait, it's gonna allow us to enter some type of value on the command line into the program that the program will read. And get string in particular is bad it's vulnerable it should no longer be used because it doesn't stop at a certain input or a certain length you can enter as many bytes as you want and if we keep scrolling down here we see right here in the bug section never use get string it is important to tell it is impossible to tell without knowing the data in advance how many characters get string will read and because get string will continue to store characters past the end of the buffer it's extremely dangerous to use and it goes on to say that it has been used to break computer security. Use fgets instead, formatted get strings. So if we peek at the man page for fgets, we see right here, not only does it take in some type of um, character pointer or some type of like buffer, it also takes in a size value. So it's going to stop reading at a certain size. So the vulnerability here is this should be fgets overflow me. And then a size of 31. It should only read in 31 bytes from the user. And then that 32nd byte, that last byte, should be the null byte, the terminator character. It's not really a big deal in like a small local program like this that we run entirely on our own computer. But if something like this was being run on like a publicly accessible web server or file share server that has some way to read user input, we can take this buffer overflow vulnerability and perhaps we can lead to complete remote code execution and take over that server entirely. So it's a very, very um, fundamental flaw. It's been around 20, 30 years, but we still see it in code today. And they can get more complex than this. This is a very beginner friendly challenge, but you can see them chained together, stack overflows, um, heat based overflows, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So where were we? So on line seven, it's gonna read in characters into this buffer. And there's this value called key that's equal to cafe, babe. So if key equals 
Cafe Babe, it's just going to give us a shell. It's going to give us business H. Otherwise, it prints out nah. So we need to overflow this buffer and change the value of key. So originally, so key is being passed as a parameter, right? So key will be OX dead beef. We need to change it to this. Let's edit this just a tiny bit. So we're going to add two print statements. Let's call it debug. Key is this key. We'll do the same thing here. We'll print out the value of the key just before and after um, we do the overflow to see it at what point do we change it. So save out of that. Oh, we need to recompile this. I don't know exactly how this was compiled. So let's compile this. I don't want any optimization. So optimization zero. File in wrong format. Why doesn't it like that? Oh, well, we tried. Let's just look at it in GDB. Ah, I'm on a new Kali Linux install. I don't have GDB installed. Okay, GDB is just the GNU debugger. So Kali Linux, it does come pre-built with a bunch of tools. If we scroll down here in this pane, we see reverse engineering. We see two compilers, Clang or Clang and Clang++. And we also see Rodare 2, which is a, I guess it's a hexadecimal editor, hexadecimal editor, decompiler and disassembler. It's fine. I'm personally not comfortable using it. We can open it up. AAA, analyze all, or is it lowercase? So analyze all flags, but that's pretty much all I know. I know we can seek with this and we can seek out the different symbols, but I've never really been a fan of Rodare. I've always just found G to be easier to use. So we have the program open, we can run file on it, right? No debugging symbols found. It is a strip binary, disassemble main. So mine is nice and pretty. It's going to be in uh, Intel syntax, just, just because I do have my own like custom little scripts. And we see here, no, not this. I do have my dot files. Yeah. And I do have one for GDB init. So cat dot files, GDB init. Right here, set disassembly flavor Intel. If you're curious about the rest of these dot files or these like um, configuration scripts. This is available on my GitHub. It's publicly accessible for anyone to peek at and look and check out and customize and play around with. So yeah, I, I just like Intel syntax a lot better. And I do have some when debug breakpoints and aliases and syntax mapped just because like a year or two ago, I was playing around with uh, Windows binary exploitation for the offensive security exploit dev thing. So I'm getting way off topic. I'm sorry, bear with me. So we have this, let's look at this. Let's disassemble this, the function. Let's set a breakpoint here. Break func plus 40, add a star there. Okay, run, flow me. Let's just slam in a bunch of A's. Hopefully that's at least 32 A's, should be. Hit enter. So we've reached our breakpoint. IR, look at our registers. Examine 24 words as hex from the current stack pointer. So here's all our A's being slammed in. So if we look at base pointer plus eight, That is our Fs. And that is at this offset. D0. Is that here? So we can do some math. One, two, three, four. No, no, it starts here. One, two, three, four, five, nine. Okay, if I'm doing this math correctly, which I usually never am. So the value at FFFCFD0. So this offset is what's being compared with OX Cafe Babe. So this is the value that we want to control. 
our A's start here at offset F, 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 C, F, 9A. So this back position. So it takes 54 characters of junk before we can get to the point where we actually control any user input. Let's test this out. A times 54. Let's just do B times, I don't know, 20. Now let's rerun this from the beginning. Let's slam in 54 A's. And let's just do one, two, three, four B's, C's, D's, E's. Grab that and append it. Let's make this easier to read. Hit enter. We're at our breakpoint. Okay. Okay, nice. So we did edit this a little bit. We didn't change it completely. So our math is wrong. The math is off. So we have the 54 A's. So let's rerun this. So that's 54 A's. Let's add two more. And then we can add these characters. I just want it to be so it's like all completely B's. And my math might be going in the wrong direction here. Yeah, so the B's are over here. We run it. So let's make this instead of 54, we'll just do 52. Then slam this in. Look at that value. Nice, it's all B's. Step one instruction. Okay, we do get the buffer overflow. That's fine. Here, let's try this. Let's make this cleaner. Run. Let's do 52 A's and then just four B's. Slam that in. Examine the value that's been compared. Okay, so this this should be good. It's still going to be wrong because it's B's and we want it to be OX Cafe Babe. So how can we how can we do that? Let's close out of this. Let's make an exploitation file. Let's call it exploit.py. From own import all. Padding equals A times 52. And the key equals cafe babe. It's not going to like this because this is a string. So these are both bytes. Payload equals padding plus key and payload. Does that work? So it does do that. Okay, I haven't used Pwn Tools in a little while, so forgive me as I look over the syntax. If you've never used it, Pwn Tools is a great capture the flag library written exclusively in Python. And it just helps automating things for reverse engineering and binary exploitation. Okay, so that's how you create a remote connection. This is what we want process. So IO. IO.send. Okay, let's see if this works. So we're attaching to the buffer overflow program, the buffer overflow process, and I need to wrap this in quotes. We're going to send our 52 bytes of padding as well as the the key that it's expecting wrap all that together in a variable called payload send that payload to the process it should give us a shell if we do it correctly and then we're going to set it in interactive mode so we can actually use that shell exit stacks masking detected terminated so it prints out nah so we are doing something incorrectly Two thousand years later.
So back in our pwn tools exploit, I added this io.receive line because the binary, the program, it does print out something to us. It does prompt us. It says overflow me. So I'm just going to grab that, get that out of the way. We're using our padding of 52 bytes that we calculated earlier, as well as the new hard coded key that we want to solve. And we're just slamming those two together in this payload variable. Ah, I see. As I'm talking out loud and explaining to you guys, I'm sending the wrong thing. I'm sending the padding. I'm not even sending the payload. Wow. Talk about like embarrassing. So change that to payload. And now when we run our exploit, there we go. If I do ID, it prints out who I am. So we got our shell. All right, cool. I was debugging that silently. <laughs> The whole time i'm like am i going crazy i know i did that math correctly it's not that complicated so always double check sometimes just talking out loud as i'm talking to you guys right now that helped i, I was i don't i won't i'll cut this but yeah i was 10 minutes just in silence trying to figure this out as soon as i open my mouth I, I see that i had the wrong value so awesome so that's how we exploit this local binary but what we want is to actually exploit uh, this service here. And it gives us a netcat connection line so we can just run our code and just pipe it into this exactly. Or we can use pwn tools. So we did, what did we do? We used this process right here, but instead we can use remote and give it a IP address or host name and a port. So let's grab this. IO equals remote, slam that in. I don't know if I like this uh, transparent background. It looks kind of ugly. File uh, preferences. What What is your guys' favorite color scheme for these kind of videos? Uh, I really don't like the the default. I think that looks a little better. Save and quit. Now, when we run it, it should connect to that surface. And do we have a shell? It's kind of just hanging so this this is close this i guess kill it with control c let's re-examine this let's get rid of this comment it out for now slam it in so it connected correctly but i don't get any input i don't know let's just print out the payload let's try to do this the old-fashioned way Then I like the receive line. Okay, so it did not like that receive line that we had in our code. Just to confirm. So I commented this out, I can just straight up delete it. We run it. All right, we're in interactive mode. LS like L. Is this not the intended path? We overflowed it and we have a shell. Oh, there we go cat flag okay kind of a finicky connection i'm not sure if that's just me or is there something wrong in the code but you saw that was not i was doing ls tech l ls tech la and nothing happened and then my connection closed but, but upon reconnection it actually displayed everything in this user's home folder so there we have it kind of sloppy um, that was a first time kill a first time solve so not too bad, not a um, super complex buffer overflow exploit technique. So there you have it, folks. That's how I solved it. That's how we did it. We use GDB, but you can use any type of disassembler or debugger. And you just want to find that offset between where you enter your user input and where the 
program actually checks for that key. We saw it was 52 bytes, and I like to use A for my padding, for my junk characters, just capital letter A. So we filled the buffer and the rest of the stack all the way until we got to the um, parameter of key, which was OX dead beef. We didn't see that in GDB, so that's an error on my part. I probably could have found exactly where that is and maybe did some math that way. And then we just changed it to OX cafe babe, the hard coded value. And we got it and we solved it. And that's really it. That's all there is, I have to say. Very beginner friendly buffer overflow on the stack. I'm sure as this goes on, it'll get more complex with other kinds of uh, more challenging buffer overflows and whatnot. But as always, take it easy and see you guys in the next video.